You're watching Science for Singers. This is Ryan Luchuk. In this video, we're going to talk about starting to understand how sound works. Now, I understand that you're watching this to help with the voice, and sound might seem a little, you know, like a separate subject, but it isn't. What happens between the time we make the sound and it gets out our lips is vital to our success as a singer. So, this is sound in its simplest form. It's called the sine wave. This drawing that we're looking at is actually two oscillations back and forth, and sine waves travel that way, back and forth. I want to make it clear that you understand that the pure sine wave doesn't really exist in nature, but this helps us understand sound. The reality is, is sounds that we hear are made up of multiple sine waves at the same time. So the speed that a sine wave moves back and forth is called its frequency, and it's measured in hertz. You may have heard of this before, especially if you're a musician playing in a band and using the EQ on your PA system. You'll see the H and the Z. Slower frequencies are lower pitches. The faster the frequency, the higher the fundamental pitch. So let's listen to a sine wave. A spectrum analyzer is a graph that measures the frequency on the bottom and the amplitude or volume on the left. Here is a 1000 hertz sine wave. You've heard this sound before. Now watch as we sweep the frequency all the way down from 20 hertz to beyond where this analyzer can actually measure, around 6,000 hertz or 6K. In the 80s, people heard a similar sound at the start of their Bon Jovi cassettes. So here we see the frequency of notes on the piano. So you'll see a number associated with every single key on the piano. So let's go to middle C. 261.63 hertz. That means that sine wave is oscillating back and forth 262 times a second. Isn't that amazing? The spectrum analyzer will show us multiple sine waves. Check this out. So I'm going to sing a note. Ah. Every single line here represents a sine wave. Number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, etc. Notice that they're relatively close together. Interesting too is that the fifth sine wave is quite a bit louder than the first sine wave. This is going to come up later. Now check out what happens when I do an arpeggio. Ah. This is what a higher pitch looks like. You'll notice that the sine waves get farther and farther apart. And this is because they're multiples of each other. So if that first sine wave is about 500, the second's going to be 1,000. The third is going to be 1,500, etc. So now that you've seen multiple sine waves, let's talk a little bit more in detail. These multiple sine waves are called harmonics. Harmonics happen at specific intervals above the note that you're singing, above the fundamental pitch. In fact, Harmonics are multiples of the fundamental pitch. The ear perceives this extra sound information that happens above the fundamental pitch, these harmonics. The ear perceives this as character. So for me, it's very useful to think of them as layers of sound. We're never just singing one particular sine wave. We have multiple sine waves happening at the same time. Just to make it more confusing, the fundamental frequency is also called the first harmonic. And this can really be a roadblock to people's understanding. So try to get used to understanding that the note that you are singing is the first harmonic. And then we have the second, third, fourth, and fifth, etc. above it. I mentioned that the ear perceives harmonics as character. What I mean by this is that if harmonics are boosted or softened, depending on how much power is in a harmonic, will have a major effect on the character of the sound that you're listening to. So just to give you an example, the trumpet is a harmonically boosted sound. It means there's a lot of power in the upper harmonics of a trumpet. 
the flute, that is not the case. Let's look at a spectrum analysis. Look at the upper harmonics of a trumpet. Some actually have more power than the fundamental. On the other hand, the fundamental frequency of a flute is usually the strongest sine wave. So how does this transfer to the voice? We've seen that a trumpet is a harmonically boosted sound. It means there's a lot of power in the harmonics. That creates a very strong, bright, brassy-like character. Does this transfer over to the voice? How about the opposite? What is a harmonically weak sound? So the human voice does have its own trumpet and flute. If you remember from the last video about registers, if I make this sound, ah, so what does that remind you of? It's much more like a trumpet, isn't it? We have a lot of power in the upper harmonics, you can see here, much more than in the fundamental frequency. So whether you want to call that sound chest voice, a strong mix, it's a rectangular shape of the vocal folds, the thyroritinoids are very much engaged. Now let's compare to the human flute. Oh. You can see the opposite here. Most of the power is in the fundamental frequency, the actual note that I'm singing. The upper harmonics are much weaker. And that is what most people would identify as a falsetto or a light head voice. So before we sign off, I'm gonna leave you with one question. If we want harmonics to be boosted to create a strong sound, how do we boost harmonics? Join us for part four.